All right, Treacle. Hello and welcome to From Dale Square to Where, uh, an extra special episode. We've got a special guest with us today, uh, and Graham as well. So, um, <laughs> <first> <laughs> anyway, Graham, Ricks, very nice to uh, have you on board. Thank you ever so much for agreeing to come on. Uh, you're welcome, Andrew. Hi, guys. How are we doing? Yeah, all with us, we've got, we've got lead judges. Welcome. You're right, uh, doing, yeah. I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm all good. Can't complain. Fantastic. Despite the uh, the, the form that Arsenal are in currently, but we're not, we're not talking about that tonight. We're talking no, about the great man here. And Melvin, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. I love these weekends. Yeah, me too. Andrew, me too. It's a... Every now and then, I can't hear you, buddy. Really? Do you stick? It's a... Every now and then, I can't hear you, buddy. Really? Do you stick your earbuds in? You can't hear that, are you? Can, can you? Can you? You talk to him, Melvin. Ask to see if he can hear you. He's can you hear me, Graham? Me. Graham, can you hear me? I can, mate. Yeah. Right. Can you? Have you got earbuds put in on anything like that? Is earphones it? or something. See, if he can hear us, then it's down to you, Andrew. I don't know. Well, I can't understand why he can't hear me, but he can hear you two. Anyway. He's had three months to sort this out, and he ain't going to hear you. <laughs> three <laughs> months. I haven't. Okay. Well, right, can you... We I, get yeah, we'll have, to, uh, we'll have to just carry on. Sorry, guys. Um, can can you hear me anyway, Greg? Well, you're going to have to do all the talking in Melbourne and Lee. Anyway. Oh, listen, guys. If you've got a problem hearing, uh, if Graham's got a obviously a problem hearing me, I don't understand what the, what the situation is. Um, but we've obviously got uh, a, a, you know, a good bit, amount of time with Graham. I mean, there's so many things that we want to talk about. And I know, I'll go to you firstly. Yeah. See if uh, Graham can hear you. You can't um, I think Graham can hear me yet. I mean, what you are, you said about uh, you know a few questions you you know you'd love to to be able to ask Graham you know, no, about listen. the, the uh, semi final. The, well, there's so many things, uh, Lee. You know, have a if you talk to to Graham at this stage, and what I might do, drop out and come back okay. in to see if it solves my problem. Okay, no worries, Graham. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, I can, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But just uh, I'll just just take over why why Andrew tries to sort himself out. Like for no, me, growing up. Yeah, as no. a, can't hear me now, like. It's the job. Oh God! I don't, can Am you I hear me, Graham? Speak to me. Yeah, Graham, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can, mate. Clear as a bell. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, that's good. Like, no, was like growing up as a kid. Um, you know, the the, the FA Cup finals of seventy eight, seventy nine, and eighty. Obviously, like ring. True to a lot of Arsenal, the old school Arsenal fans, like you know. Of course, obviously you was involved. At, well, you was, but you was left out of the the seventy eight one and um, the disappointment of that to come back into the seventy nine one. What was it like being left out of that first one and then to come back into the second one and and do what you did because you, you starred in the second you know, one, of course. Yeah, you know, ultimately, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I see the things that happen today, and if a lad gets pulled off as a sub. For a substitute, he walks off the pitch, he's all sulking and, you know, he's giving it, no, oh, you know, oh, what's up? I played 38 out of 42 league yeah. games that year. Wow. In 78. And I scored in the semi-final against Orient. That's right, yeah, and correct. two days before the final, Terry Neal and Don Howe called me in the office. And don't forget, I was, I think I was just 20. I was just 20. He called me in the office and he said, we're not playing yet. We're playing uh, Alan Sunland and Malcolm McDonald and Alan Hudson. Because there was like four of us going for three spots. Mate, I, I, I cried in front of him. And I came out of the office and I had to walk through the treatment room. And Liam was having treatment on his ankle at the time. And he looked at me and I just, I just shook my head and he could tell I was crying. And I cried all the way home. 
and I cried all that night because oh, as a young lad of 1920, all you ever dream mm. about is getting into a, a, a first team, but then playing in a cup final. How many chances do you get to play in a cup final? I didn't know I was going to play in another couple. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. Probably, yeah, exactly. It, uh, it, it devastated me. And, and I was so disappointed. But in a in a perverse sort of way, it, it was quite good for me. Because when I was there, I was under no pressure on the day because I was sub. So it wasn't like, oh, you know, I've got to do this, I've got to do... I was, I was quite cool about it. And I took in the atmosphere and I really enjoyed it because I thought, well, I'm going to be sitting on the bench. OK, I got on for 20-odd minutes or whatever it was. <clears throat> And this always sticks in my mind. We had a meeting on the Monday because we were all devastated. We were rubbish on the day, rubbish against mm. Ipswich. And uh, Alan Hudson, bless him, he'd obviously had a party from Saturday night through to Monday morning, I think, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he played hell. He said, that boy should have been playing. It's a joke. You picked the wrong team. He should have been playing. And And... You know, that gave me a huge boost as a young lad. Uh, but in a perverse sort of way, it helped me, you know, because the following year I was, I was ready and nothing was too big for me. I was, I was ready to accept the occasion. So, yeah. But that's a, that's a great, that's a great story. Yeah. Like, you know, because I, I remember that the press was saying at the time it was very harsh for you to be left out and everything. And, um, uh, and, and like my dad was a, was, was used to go to the game. Says I can't believe like Rixie's been left out of this team, and everybody was like a little bit miffed by it, weren't they at the time? When, when you scored that goal in the semi-final Andrew. against the Orient, Graham, I think you're the only person to actually have a shot on target because two of Malcolm's goals weren't even going in. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Malcolm McDonald hit two shots. They were going on the corner flag, and they got deflected. Both of them. Yeah. It did. Like, yeah. Going, I, uh, I think I, if I remember correctly, it was a long time ago, obviously, but I think I ran from about the halfway line and beat a couple of lads. Keep you did a one two as well, I think, honest. Graham, if I remember correctly. One two, I think you might have played before you actually put stuck oh, it away. I? I think so, yeah. Okay. The Stanford okay. Bridge, wasn't it? Yeah. It's good. Great days. Yes, it Great was old days, days. Though. Well, they they were great for for a young kid to be involved in that. You know, in his first season was sensational for me. Sensational. What was it like playing I in that, that team? Can't always hear you guys. Yeah. All right. So, what was it like playing in that right. team? Yeah, in, with that team with like the Liam Brady's, Frank Stapleton's. I think I think the fact that most of us had come through the ranks together to a certain yeah. extent, Stapleton. You know, what a great player. For me, yeah. he was a great player playing with Frank. Uh, obviously, Liam. But then the, on the periphery of that, there was lads like Dave Price, uh, Richie Powlin had come through the ranks. Uh, Wilf Rostrum was there or thereabouts. Trevor Ross was there or thereabouts. So, Johnny Matthews. We, we had that core of lads who'd, been, who'd come through the ranks together. And we weren't we weren't the finished article, but we had enough about us to do well in the cup. For example, we weren't quite ready to win the league and all that business. We needed a few more players. I think everybody would agree with that. But we had a real togetherness, you know. And unlike to, unlike today's players, present day players, when we finished a game on a Saturday. We went out together. You know, we, we would go down a, a pub in either in Islington or in Southgate or wherever it was. And there'd be eight or nine of us. And then the wives would come out to meet us. And then we went out as a group. I'm not sure that happens anymore. We had no. a fantastic, fantastic team spirit amongst us. We really did. And, um, and what... really, I think the club missed a trick. Because they did have some good young players at that time. David Leary, obviously, Frank Stapleton, Liam Brady, myself, John Devine. We had a really good nuclear. Mm. And they should have added to that. 
they should have added to it to make us be able to compete with Liverpool, who were the kings at the time. And instead, they'd let Liam Brady leave. They'd let Frank Stapleton leave. And as a player, as a player in that era, that was such a such a kick in the knee. And I, I'm right. not being disrespectful to the boys that they brought in, but nah. they were never going to be as good as, as Frank Stapleton and Liam Brady. They weren't. They were world-class players. It, so it was a, a kick player, in the teeth. That, that was really tough. It was a kick in the teeth for you, Graham. It was a kick in the teeth for us fans as well, like, you know, just having that success that we had. And that was, that was a, a poignant thing. Did, did you feel let down by that? Because obviously you had to take over the mantle for that. A lot of pressure coming onto you because of that. Especially when Liam left, well, it was like, sort of went on to your... Yeah. People have asked oh. me that. And, and, and I, my answer to that was, I didn't really feel under any pressure taking over from Liam. But the difference was, and I'm not being big when I say this, guys, but Liam had me to play with. He had Frank Stapleton to play with. So the, the the more players you've you've got around Fair you who know what they're doing, the easier it is. You know what I mean? So yeah. I mean when I think that Liam left to go to Juventus and he did great, don't get me wrong, but wow, you know, we could have developed over the years into into God knows what really. Seriously. Yeah. 100%. We could have really with, with, But within that team, Graham, within that team, you had a great you had a lot of partnerships. There was you and Liam's partnership. There was Stapleton and Sunderland yeah. we had. We had uh, yeah. Pat Rice and Nelson. They were terrific fullbacks. And the centre-halves, I never thought I'd say it. When he first signed for us, Willie really Young, no no Arsenal supporter wanted him <laughs> for two reasons. Number one, he was Spurs. Yeah, yeah. And number two, he was. we didn't think he was very good, to be honest with you. But he was such yeah. a good player for us. Him and David O'Leary was two opposites as centre halves go, but they worked so well together, didn't they? Absolutely. You know, I mean, in those days, obviously, it was four four two, and that's what it was all about. Your little partnerships all around the pitch, and Willie, Willie would head anything. Whereas Dave O'Leary was as quick as you like. He was the quickest at the club, Dave. I'm telling you, mm. uh, it was so speedy. And he'd read the situation. Myself and Liam always used to give Sammy stick, Sammy Nelson. I mean, that goes without saying, doesn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> we always told him he couldn't play. <laughs> You're rubbish, Sam. You're rubbish. Just tackle and give it to us. We, we hammered him, mate. <laughs> but but uh, I, I, think, I think Alan Sunderland was a really underrated footballer. You know, he was... He, he was quick, he was clever, he was intelligent in his movement. He was he was a he good was player, Sunday. And him and Stapleton were a, a very good partner. Did you, was that a, a, an awkward situation with uh, Malcolm McDonald? Because obviously Malcolm McDonald was probably in front of uh, Frank at the time. And then, like, like I, I, can, I remember, Frank was sort of like wearing a number 10 sometimes, then a number nine coming in. Then, obviously, Malcolm got injured. And that really led the way for Frank then, didn't it? And it was no turning back then, was there, between them two? Yeah, I think... I mean, Frank, to be fair to him, is, is a, I think he might be a year older than me, Frank. And when I played with him in the youth team and the reserves, he, he wasn't the best footballer by any means. But, oh, my God, he could run, he'd chase everything. He was great in the air. He was a great target. And, and I always use Frank, even now when I speak to younger players, if they can remember Frank Sable, than that is. But I always, I always use him as an example. He got in the first team at 19, I think he was. And he realised he needed to be better. So even though he was in the first team and playing in front of 40,000 every week, he knew that wasn't enough for him. And he was back three times a week in the afternoon with a ball in the old gym at uh, Highbury, kicking it against the wall, making his technique better, not being satisfied with just being in the first team. And I, I think that speaks volumes about Frank Stapleton. You yeah. know what I mean? What sort of character he was, what drove him. And I mean, you know, he used to do things eventually 
that I thought, oh my God, Frank, there's no way you couldn't have done that at 18, 19, mate. So I've got nothing but respect for Frank. And, and uh, Malcolm was obviously very unfortunate to get injured. I have to swear on this program, Andrew. Yeah, of yeah. course. Because yeah. I've got a little story about Super Mac. You can hear yeah, me? swear away. Hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. So when I was a young kid, I was about seventeen, and we were at London Coney, and all the lads used to eat together. So as an event, as a YTS boy, you could find yourself next to Alan Ball or Frank McClintock or John Radford or you know anybody, Jordy Armstrong. They just treated you like anybody else. Well, we just signed Malcolm McDonald for 333,333 pence, yeah? Mm. Uh, yeah? Recurring. I was injured. So I went in for my dinner in, in the hall and John Radford was there. John Radford walked in and John Radford lived three miles from where I come from in, up, up in Yorkshire. So he knew exactly where I lived in the village and all that. And all the time, he'd always say to me, where is he come from, Rico? You know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I sat next to him and I thought, what an opportunity. What an opportunity to glean John Radford's mind. So I went, hello, John. And he went, all right, Rico. And then he went, <laughs> I said, been doing this morning. He said, we've been practicing free kicks. I went, oh, really? How does it go? I thought, what an opportunity this is to get something from a top class player. So I said, how does it go, John? He said, well, we get a free kick about 20 yards out and I get ball and they make a wall and I put ball down and I have a look. And then Malcolm says, fuck off, Raddy, I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a guy, so I don't know if it, Greg, can you hear me now or not? Oh, there's too big a delay here. There's too big a delay. No, guys, can you, oh, in the um, yeah, so, chat uh, there, there's a, there's a question from Richard. Can place. you ask that? And I think the club should set. have done more, definitely, in the late 70s to make us a real force. A real force. Mm -hmm. Graham, someone's just asked a question on the chat. Um, Am I allowed ask... to swear like that? Yeah, yeah, of course you are. Yeah, yeah no right. problem. Sorry, mate. Someone on the chat just asked, can you ask Graham about Alan Sunderland? I heard he was a prickly character. Is that true or not? A prickly character? Yeah. <clears throat> nah. It was a great league. It really was. And obviously, uh, we signed him from Wolverhampton. And he kept, he drove down to the, the training ground out at London Colney for his first day there. And uh, he said, me, me and Liam were chatting to him afterwards over lunch. And we said, where are you staying out? And he said, oh, West Lodge Park in Cockfosters. So we said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll show you the way. Because he didn't know the way. So he followed us in his car. And as we were getting near Cockfosters, we told him to go left down this road. <laughs> it was just a country lane to nowhere. <laughs> 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 oh, so he went along that lane for about a mile and a half. So it was a bit prickly the next day. Yeah, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> he was a great player. I still, think... <laughs> I still touch base with Sunday. I mean, regular, you know, messaging and making sure he's okay. Because he went to Malta. God, it must be about 30 years ago. So, you know, he's a, he's a great lad, Sunday. Great lad. No, oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear, like, you know. So, Guys, um, I've, uh, I've just uh, dropped a, uh, in the private chat as well. I'm sorry I'm having to do this. I don't understand why Graham can't hear me, but uh, it's a yeah. bit annoying for me. But there you go. There's a question in the private chat as well. 
Another uh, question could, coming uh, up, I think. Is that right, Melvin? Right, considering your England career, etc., where does Brady rank rank among the best midfielders you've played with? How good was Liam, in other words? You know, sir. Is a special player about that. I actually played with him about three, which which was a bit of a one, really, you know, to what we could have achieved. And it's quite interesting because I, I showed my wife the other day, he sent me a WhatsApp message and the photograph on his WhatsApp is him playing for Juventus against me playing for Arsenal. We had a pre-season game. And and it's me and him, me and my Arsenal kit and him and his Juventus kit on his WhatsApp. That means a lot to me. That uh, he was a great player. He couldn't head it. He couldn't tackle. He couldn't kick it with his right foot. But oh my God, everything else he could do really well. He was unbelievable. And a match winner. You know, can you imagine in today's game? How, how he be in today's game? Oh. Not allowed to kick in great pitches, you know, mate. Superstar. How we could do with him now? Superstar. I don't think there's an Arsenal I've side. Said that. I played with some good players in the England setup. You know, mm. I'm not saying they were Brady. They were different. Who else different was? Who, players, who but, else would compare? You know, I think we'd all Robson? agree that uh, Brian Robson was certainly a very yeah. effective midfield player yeah. for Manchester United and England. Uh, yep. Ray Wilkins, bless him, was a super footballer, you know, and, and Glenn Hoddle, I know you probably don't want to hear that, but, you know, he could play the lads, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. It was a rumour that you was good friends off. with Glenn don't Hoddle, is that off, correct? Melvin, just because I said Glenn Hoddle. <laughs> he, he worked with him, worked with Glenn, what? Glenn Hoddle. You, you were friends yeah, with Glenn massive Hoddle. Players. Massive. Yeah, I was yeah. surprised, yeah. I went into a pub. And you were with there was some something asked some Arsenal game. I don't know no, why I got invited. I, I, invited and you were with, I couldn't believe you were with Hoddle because it was a rivalry then, wasn't it? All the Arsenal fans going, Rixie is better, better than Hoddle. And we, I didn't realise, a lot of my friends didn't realise how, how close, you know, you were actually having a drink. And I thought, oh, that's a bit strange. You know, you think, you get in your mind about rivalries, but they don't really exist. It's respect, isn't it, as well? You know something, Melvin, we we didn't know each other because obviously he's a he's a London lad and I'm a northern boy. And when we were both 17, we went to the England under 18 get together and didn't know him. But after training had finished, I stayed out to do just a little bit extra with a ball and practice whatever I was in at the time. And so did Glenn. We were the only two who stayed out. So we were pinging balls and cutting them and bending them this way, that way, and just getting better at what we've done. And from day, we, we hit it off. We were massive buddies. And although there was this rivalry between Arsenal and Tottenham, quite often, I shouldn't say this, but quite often, we'd be out on a Thursday night having a beer together and on the Saturday, we'd be lining up against each other. And there'd be 60,000 at Highbury. And they'd be going, oh, snow, top, no. Oh, snow, top, no. And Rice would be coming round saying, I'm on camel. <laughs> and I'd look he was opposite me. And we just, like, shoulders. Oh, uh, it's a Shame about the uh, so, connection. Oh, Melton, that's who it was there. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah, we're massive buddies, still are. Wow, that's great. Right. That's great. Right. Can you ask that? There's a question from Miss Molina in the uh, chat as well saying, um, what's uh, Graham's favourite all time memory at Arsenal? If you could ask that. Debut when he scored. Does that help you along, Graham? He, he can't hear me. Can he, so can you ask that question? Sorry. Yeah. What is your 
all-time favourite memory at Arsenal, Graham? Oh my God. Do you know how difficult that is to answer? <laughs> there's, there's, there's so many, so many things that, that happened to me in my time there. Seriously, that, that is. I really can't pinpoint only about the football and the matches and, and the cups and doing this and doing that. It's about the relationships you build up. Over, you know, I was going there when I was like 13. So I knew all the electricians at Highbury, all the plumbers, the laundry lay. I knew everybody at Highbury. And I always had an integral part of the football club. So to pick one moment, I, 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 I think football-wise, I think it was probably... I'd, I'd probably have to say winning the FA Cup in second, but not football wise. I think being, I was really touched that when I left Arsenal, when I was third, the guys who, the stewards on the big green gates, Highbury, that was in the car park, leading into the car park, they gave me people brass cannon on a wooden plane and it said to Rixie from Fed and Boys on the Gate. And that wow. that got me. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, they, mm. they didn't have to do that. No. They, I didn't see him every day, but for them to acknowledge that every time I drove in, hey Fred, hey guys, how you doing? For them to acknowledge that, that's, yeah. that touched me big time. Big time. Can, can you um, ask I'm a Graham? Softie, as well? really. <laughs> I'm a softy. Um, someone said in which... the chat. Someone said in the chat, which is a good thing, right? I, I think this is one of my favourite goals that you ever scored. Was against Leeds. Obviously, do you remember that last? What, the Leeds scored in the ninety-second minute, I think, and then you you got a free kick yes. in the last. Like that. That was, was sensational free kick. That was a game. That must live in the memory, being from Yorkshire as well, put, doing that against Leeds as well. Like, I, I remember that with like they scored. Now. I'm going to ask you now. Okay? Go on. I'm going to ask you now. If I had gone in the same netting, what would you have shouted at me? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Like, I mean, it was like, uh, well, I thought we, to be honest, I thought we was out. You know what I mean? We, we, was, we was a goal down with seconds to go. And, and and I remember I, I remember the pitch weren't the greatest, was it? And like, uh, what's he doing? Going to hit it from thirty-five yards here? But when it went in, it was it was no. an unbelievable free kick, unbelievable free kick. I think like, uh, I think it was a midweek game, so I, it weren't on telly and things I, like that. And a lot of people missed that, Graham. But it was a sensational goal. I can't believe John Lukic was in. Yeah, yeah. John, John Lukic was in goal for Leeds. Yeah, that's right. And he was. Benny Sanson was stood next to me and he went and he went what do you think I went Ken have a look where the keeper is and he went he's out there goals I went yeah so all the big guys O'Leary and Young and all, whoever we had whoever it was and I waved them further away you know as if say to the keeper I'm really hitting it over there he bless him it's a few more yards, right? So I just pretended and I'd just give him the eyes a little bit and it went in. And I can't believe we signed him the following year. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got to ask this, this question. This is a question from me. Obviously, like, we had a little bit of the doldrums from... Obviously, that Liam Brady. That goal. Brilliant one, that is. Liam Brady leaving and then, obviously, Frank Stapleton. What was it like when Charlie Nicholas signed? Because I, I think that was a big thing for Arsenal. He was like, um, everybody was sort of wanting him and everything like that. And Arsenal got him. And it, it was a big, big coup for the club to get to get somebody like that stature. What was it like when he came to the, to the club? I 
Uh, yeah, because uh, if I remember correctly, everybody thought he was going to go to Liverpool. They thought it was That's nailed right. on that he was going to go to Liverpool. Or United. And obviously... Or United. But, I mean, anyone who scores 48 goals in a season at whatever level, that takes some doing. So, he obviously had something in the kid. He came down. I mean, he could obviously play. He had this charisma about him. I think I was captain at the time. And he came in and he was larger than life. And, you know, it was... It was a great lad, but we could tell he was a little bit Jack the lad, needed pulling down, down a peg or two. So, for the first two or three weeks that he was at the club, every day we'd open up the Daily Star or whatever, and it'd be seven feather, uh, pace and, and it'd be Charlie with a cowboy hat on and a pair of six guns and a couple of birds next to him. <laughs> and all the lads are going, oh, Rick Owls about no. the following being like, you know, got a, got a safari hat on or something, you know, with a couple of birds. So I pulled him. I had to pull him. I was a skipper. I just went, Charlie, stop all that rubbish. Stop all that rubbish. You've got to play your football. You've got to show people what you can do. You've got to show the lads what you can do. And then when you've done that, then you can go and do what you want. And he went, fair comment. No more photographs in the newspaper. Great lad, Charles. Great, great lad. And really, I, I, wish he'd, I wish he'd played, with all due respect to the boys, but I wish he'd played in a better Arsenal team. Because I yeah. think he was sensational. Definitely. I really yeah, do. Definitely. His, yeah. his close control was superb and what made him a favourite apart from anything else was he always scored against Spurs scored some classics <laughs> against Spurs and in the League Cup final you know they, they, they yeah. always be remembered for that apart from anything else he, he lifted yeah. the club when he first came definitely yeah he did because that, that was a good time for us think, eight, when, when Paul Mariner come because you had Paul Mariner oh, I did I mean uh, that was uh, that Tony eight, eight, what was it? 85, 84, 85, yeah, it was a good good team mm. that was. It was a really entertaining Charlie team to Dickens. watch that was. Yeah, I used to Charlie, like Tony Woodcock, he was good. Tony Woodcock, yeah, Paul Mariner and yourself. That was a real quartet of quality that was. Was Steve Williams in that team, Lee? Or was he a bit later? I think he came just a little bit yeah, later. But, been, uh, oh, right. Stuart Steve Robson was well. Uh, right, yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah, I think Stuart Robson, who was a brilliant midfield player until he got injured, injuries, but like, yeah, it was Robert, a real good midfield. Kenny yeah. Dancing, Paul Davis, yeah. Paul Davis was around then as well. Paul Davis he? was coming through as well, yeah. So it was a really, it was a really entertaining Hockey, team. Him. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. It was a, that, that was a really Just entertaining didn't team and didn't win nothing. No, we got, I think, got to the Shame. quarterfinals of a, the FA Cup and I, whatever. I don't but, know about guys. I'm one you guys now I'm thinking one into you all right go on I miss Highbury oh yeah. God, yeah don't man. go there don't go there, <laughs> don't go there. listen it's a, my, my grand my family um is mixed between Arsenal and Spurs my, my grand my mum's side were all Arsenal and my dad's side were uh my mum's side were all Tottenham my dad's side were all Arsenal and the I used to go to Arsenal one week, Spurs the next as a kid. But the one thing that made me go to Arsenal, two things, was the red and white shirts and Highbury. And it was Highbury. It was just, you know, the no, the floodlights were on the roofs. It was just different. It was just something spectacular about the place. I think it's the most be beautiful stadium in the world. I do, um, honestly. And then, then they, took it away, they took it away from us, you know. And that, a, uh, night, a night game at Highbury took a bit of yeah. a we, our family, I used to go meet my father and my uncle and a cousin used to come with us every week. You know, I was the youngest of the lot. And we used to go out there. We used to stand outside the, where the players come out, the marble halls. And the players used to mix with everyone. They used to come out. Yeah. And one of the players might say to someone, oh, so-and-so's not playing today. Right? They go, oh, really, really? You know, and all that. It was just, it was fantastic. The Amazing. whole build-up was so, so good. And you felt part of it at Highbridge for some reason. You know, the whole thing was absolutely brilliant. And I do miss it. I went there. I used to go there from 
I suppose, 63, yeah. I started going all this, right? And I loved it. I mean, even if we're playing poorly, we, you know, we I, were doing very well, know. and whatever was going on, I was looking forward to going to every single game, which I can't say mm. at the moment. Me yeah. too. The, the other great thing, the last game of the season, mm. they used to let you on the pitch. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could mm. walk on the pitch and like, mm. and just like, it was a, it's a yeah. wonderful place, wonderful place. You know, obviously to, to play football on there would have been unbelievable, but to, even just to watch it and be a part of it, unbelievable. And also, Can you ask what a... was good, the half-time mm. things with the letters, everyone used to, you know, with Spurs were playing, get their score first. Yeah. So to put mm. the old letters in with a, that was so funny. You think, oh no, that Spurs scored a goal and things like that. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> and the band yeah, yeah, going up and down the yeah, pitch before the game. Well, the old band, you remember the band used to come round and he always he always used to throw the old baton up in, in the North Bank. And I was always That's desperate. It. For him. <laughs> you know what it was Morgan, it was just, wasn't it, Lee? Was his name yeah. Morgan or something? Some, oh, something Morgan. like that. Yeah. 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 Morgan. Oh, so it's just, yeah, it, was, it was just class. It was just saying class yeah, about. He was the guy who the he, he sang. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, Do you remember the guy that walked around selling monkey nuts? The old peanuts <laughs> sellers. Yeah, get outside as well. Out Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Much you get outside and also guys. peanuts. Listen, guy, can you ask Graham about the World Cup in 1982? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just to change it from, from the Arsenal, Graham, to the World Cup in to the World Cup in 82, because obviously you was um, a big part of that uh, 82 World Cup team, and. Um, not only was it a good World Cup for us, it was uh, we had the best the best song ever, the, the song that was going there, and and the iconic kits. And we we had a good World Cup, you know, bit bit unlucky like to to get knocked out. How was your, how was your feelings of the World Cup? I, I remember that's my first real World Cup as a kid, and you and um, Kenny you know, being a part uh, of it was I, massive. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm the same. I don't know how old you guys are. But I'm the same as any kid growing up in era. You know, that I remember the first time I saw Johan Cruyff do the Cruyff turn. That that blew me mind. So, so these iconic moments in World Cups. So to be part of it was beyond my wildest dreams, and it's. Funny how it happened because I was in and out of the England team, and the last game, or one of the last games, the last game at Wembley before the World Cup, uh, Holland. And we trained in the morning, and then we had lunch. Then we went back to our rooms for a sleep, and I was sharing with Kenny Sansom, and I said, Ken, I don't think I'm going to be going to the World Cup. You know, he's playing Alan Devonshire tonight. So, it looks like I'm, you know, I'm going to miss out. And he went, you never know, Rico. You never know, Sam. You never know. So, anyway, we go to the Wembley. And uh, they're playing Holland. And Alan Devonshire, I mean, I love Dev. What a footballer he was. Best time. And he had an absolute nightmare. He had a nightmare, Dev. And... Just before, before half time, Ron Green at half time, look, you're going on for Dev. I went, all oh, right, okay. So I went on the pitch and warmed up and blah, blah, blah. I went back to the change room, put my shimpers on, and, and all lads are coming over saying, good luck, Rico, you know, good luck, son, good luck. And Alan Devonshire actually said to me, good luck. And I think that speaks volumes for what kind of bloke he was. You know, he said, mm. good luck, mate, knowing that if mm. I played well. Anyway, I did play quite well. And we ended up winning 2 nil, and I had a hand in one of the goals. And as I know, whistle went, as we were walking off towards the tunnel, Ron Greenwood put his arm around me and he said, do you know what you just done, son? I said, no, boss. He said, you've just put your ticket to Spain. So I, I wow. knew oh, before wow. anybody oh, else yeah. that I was Spain. I'd gone from a 22 man squad. I've gone from number 27 straight into 22. <laughs> so I was so excited. And so then I went over there, not expecting to play. You know, Kins Robson, 
uh, Brooking, Cobble, you know, they were the four, really. Well, we got out there and, and uh, Trevor Brooking, bless him, was injured. So I had to play and I played every and I absolutely loved it. And and the, the biggest memory for me in that is is actually the first game in Bilbao. I don't know how many were there that day. There was thousands of English fans. Oh my God, it was unbelievable. I think that was the first World Cup we've been in since 1970, was it, or something? We were yeah, there in the yeah, yeah. 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 first cup yeah. since 1970. So, Mad so there was thousands there, and we played France, and they had you know, Platini, Dress, Diercis, Roche. They had so many superstar players, and we hammered them. And we hammered them. Sticks in my well for it because. When I left Arsenal and went to play in France, I bumped into Michel Platini at a game. And he went, ah, you know, in his French, bonjour, Monsieur Rix, blah, blah, blah. And he went, ah, bloody Rob. <laughs> and Rix, Wilkins, I thought he was uh, French, not Pakistani. Because we were at him <laughs> all the time. Beat him 3 1. So to go there and play every game was honestly a great experience for me I learned so oh, much brilliant. Brilliant. It's, it's, hard. The best. it's hard because you're away and it's you know the best England yeah, kits of all time six, seven weeks. and it's, it's, a, it's a tough slap but now when they're playing that national anthem and there's 15,000 fans in Bilbao singing yeah, yeah. quality Probably. I just I've got to ask a question, Graham. Um, it, when it when it comes to an end at Arsenal with George Graham, because what was it like when George Graham came in? Because obviously he, he he wanted to get rid of the old guard, didn't he? He wanted the young guys coming in. Did you did you find that tough to to take, or was there there an acceptance that the time was ready to leave Arsenal? You know something. Well, really, I, when I was about 25, this is always a big regret of mine to a certain extent. When I was about 25, 26, I had a really bad Achilles tendon injury. And mm. although I was in pain, they couldn't find anything. And in all seriousness, I played for 18 months in the first team. Without ever training, I'd play on a Saturday, I'd rest Sunday, Monday, maybe play Tuesday. It's just on the back. I never trained. I like, got a bus to go into a dress room for games, limping. I was limping. I, I just was a I 18 months. And really, I didn't play great. It affected me form. There's no doubt about that. And I drifted away from the England team, which pointed me. George came. His first year, I was in his team. And I was playing really well. I was enjoying him. We were hard, disciplined, good team. I thought, here we go. And I got injured after about 12 games. Achilles tendon operation. Missed the season. With me, the following season, I was in his team again. Played about 15 games, did me other Achilles tendon, another operation, missed the rest of the season. So he said to me, Graham, I love you. And if you were fit, you'd be team. He said, but in the last two years, I played 30 games and we're paying you a few quid and, and I can't afford to keep you go on a transfer and it absolutely devastated me but a bit like when Terry and Don told me I wasn't playing in the 78 cup final it devastated me but you brush yourself off and go okay what's next I've got to show people and how, how and, come uh, you went to France? I was lucky enough to find this club in France and I went over there and at the, to be honest with you, 
probably the best three years of life over there. The ball, the way of life, the way people treated me. Uh, honestly, the, the football I played, I played well. I loved it. And even now, I go back there 30 odd years later. Oh my God, it's great. For a Yorkshireman not to have to buy a drink, that is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I think I seem to remember that he yeah, there was offers in the uh, first division. Like, I think it was. Um, I might keep, I don't so, know, yeah, keep I have no or... problem with George. And I'm glad they had the success. I was actually there at Anfield in 89. Although I'd left the club, I flew back from France. Oh, wow. With wow. the president of the club, the director sportif of the club, the coach of the club, and me and Brian Steen, who was playing out there with me. And me and Steeny, me and Brian Steen sat behind the goal where Mickey Thomas scored. Amazing. Wow, that's Amazing. Unreal. And Amazing. it was about three minutes left, and I was sat near now. I was sat with Niall Quinn, who was not involved, and he said to me, he went, Nico, if you want to dress up, we better go now, because they're not the lads it ain't gonna happen from I can tell it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so we started walking, we jumped over the wall and started walking around. And we actually at the corner flag when Mickey ran through and knocked it in the net. And me me and Quinny were jumping up and down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. They were, they were on, still man. all my boys, you know what I mean? Rocky and Mickey yeah. Thomas and all, all that lot. They were they were still my lads. And, uh, uh, I was jumping up and down. Anyway, I, I get to the tunnel and the final whistle goes and there's this lad, a grown man in his in his late thirties, with a red and white scarf around his neck, and he's crying. And I went, Don't keep crying, mate. You know, you've won it enough times, you guys. And he went, I'm not Liverpool, I'm an all. <laughs> God, it's so annoying this is, I can't, so, I can't say tough. But even if I wasn't there. I'm going to send a private message. I was there Have a look. Spirit that day, definitely, definitely. Graham, um, how many players, not just Arsenal, but we were talking about Arsenal, of today, would go back to their club 15 years later to watch them play a very important game. Yeah. I don't think we'd have it. Honestly, I don't think it'd happen. And that's the difference. Today's footballers are so different. I mean, you know, I've, over the years, I'm lucky enough to have met a few and they're just down to earth guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you, the ones I wouldn't be in the same company with the ones now, different circles, if you like, even if I did bump into them in, Somewhere, I'd, I'd feel a little bit no, I don't feel right, you know. But years ago, if you happen to bump into one, it was like yeah. fantastic. We, we, we would just, fantastic. We would just ordinary lads. We, we were just ordinary lads, you know. We were getting well paid, we didn't get well paid, we did, but we weren't doing it for that reason. We were doing it because a we wanted to play in front of thousands of people that that was a big draw show what we could do wanted to have glory with your team playing cup finals win leagues whatever play for your country it wasn't about what car you drove or how many twitter followers you got it wasn't like that we, yeah. we i lived in in southgate winchmore hill nearly all my career and I knew everybody. There was Tottenham fans I used to stop and chat to because you were just part of the furniture and everybody was in it together. And now it's just, it's a totally different world. And I, uh, if I was a football fan, a real follower, I'd, I'd find it hard today because I'd, I'd find it hard to relate to the players. Yeah, 100%. I get upset. I've said this before. I want to repeat myself, not for the last time. That when you see players come off a coach with their sunglasses on, their headphones in, head down, and all the like 10 year olds just want a little wave from them. 
and they just no interest. They just went straight through and showed the kids no respect at all. It's really disappointing, I find. I think it's horrible that can't stand it. But what, one question That's I want to ask you though is you joined what did you join? 13 or 14 you joined the Arsenal, you the said, business. right? When you what at what age did you realise, and we're all biased, yeah. that Arsenal was a special club? Not just the club you're playing for, but a special club compared to the other clubs around. So I'm from a little village just out of Castle, Little Pidge, right? And in those days, there wasn't mobile phones, you know, talking late, late 60s, early 70s. There was nothing. And at the age of 12, I got asked to go to Sheffield United, who were in the top division at the time. People like Len Badger and Alan Woodward playing for them and Mickey Spate. And... Uh, that was down the road from me. And I went there and I stayed a week. And I stayed in digs with Mrs. Cooper, my first ever landlady. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Came back home. Loved it. The following half term, got in touch again. Graham, we'd like you down. So I went down again. Loved it. I'd, I'd, I'd done this for about six months. And then the scout came. He came round one Sunday afternoon after, after our game. And he said to me, Dad, uh, Mr. Ricks, we'd really like Graham to sign associate schoolboy forms for Sheffield United. And I'm, I'm like, you know, sat on the settee like that, little, little 11, 12-year-old kid. And uh, my dad went, no, he's not signing. And I looked at my dad as if to say, Dad, you lost your fucking <laughs> marbles or something. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, anyway, and afterwards I went, Dad, Dad, you know I want to be a footballer. Why, why, why don't I sign for him? He said, you gain nothing for it. He said, oh, because he ties you to the club. He said, you never know what's around the corner, Graham. A month later, Later, there was a knock on the door on a Sunday tea time and it was a scout for Arsenal, a bloke called Bill James. Hello, Mr. Ricks. Yeah, we'd like your son, Grant. Come down at half term and... Da, 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 da. Oh, oh, my God. So, I went to Arsenal. I went to, I went to Leeds United, spent some time up there. They were my team. I went to Donny Rovers, my local team. I went to Jeff United. I could have gone to Spurs, I could have gone to Haas, I could have gone to Wolves Cup. Every club was chasing me. Once I've been to Arsenal, for the first time, that was it. <laughs> Everything was different league. Coaches, the training, the facilities, the atmosphere, the opportunity, the, the, the camaraderie. Uh, everything about it, everything was so, so spot on. I'd already made my mind up. This is if they want me, this is where I want to go. This is where I'm coming. Oh, and uh, right, right to see, they were trying God. hard to persuade me to sign, Brilliant. not with, not with money. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they actually brought my mum and dad down for a, for a weekend, and. They, Obviously, we got the treatment, you know, sit upstairs, have, have dinner in the restaurant, and then watch the match, you know, treated like kings. And as we, we got up to the restaurant for the first time, one old commissioners, my mum's coat off and said, I'll take that for you, Mrs. Ricks. And she turned around. She, she couldn't believe it, my mum. <laughs> he knew her name. London was nicking a coat. To know who she was <laughs> and take a coat off her. And after, after after that weekend, she said to me, this is where you've got to come, Graham. You've got to come here. I said, yeah, I know, Mum. No brain. Yes. Absolutely story. no brain. What a great story. Fantastic. Did they, did, did, what did they do with the whippet and the flat if cap, Graham? If only it worked out for us. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a great there's story, a, that is. There's a, a couple story. of uh, questions in the private chat, guys, if you can have Still a look there. at those and uh, ask those. Because he's, right, he's, right. he's, no, yeah, he's only got five more minutes. So I, was, I, was a mad fan. I was a mad Leeds fan when I was a kid. Yeah, so I was, that's so. I'm Arsenal. surprised you didn't hate. never. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't. And then when I came down, sign for Leeds, in just shows you, doesn't it, what how big Arsenal is in big big draw it was. Oh yeah, but it won the mm, same. Right. See, I, 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 it, it, they weren't. I mean, obviously they they won the double in '71. I joined in '74, but it wasn't that. Guys. It was how helpful. And nice everybody was, you know, from the physios to the coaches to, to Ernie Collett taking you to your digs to the landlady being out in my ship, you know, just everything about it. You would, the, I'll, I'll give you a little insight into the difference. When I went to Sheffield United, I loved it. Absolutely loved good people, really good club. <clears throat> and my first landlady, Mrs. Cooper, she used to work at Sheffield United in the Derby. And years later, I went in there as a first team player of Arsenal to find her. And she remembered me, Mrs. Cooper. Can you believe that? She said, I followed your career. Yeah. I'm delighted for you. Oh, so, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. 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 Graham, who were your heroes at Leeds then? Going uh, right. when you were right, growing up, was it like Bremner and people like that? Yeah, all those people. They Brendan were a very Charles, good team. Then. Gray. Oh, phenomenal team. Didn't like them, but they were a very good team. <laughs> Dirty leads. That's where it all came from, isn't it? <laughs> oh, they're players. I went to the PFA dinner and I sat with all the Arsenal boys on the table sat next to Liam you know Dicky Bowen and all that business thought it was the dogs and uh, <laughs> the Leeds lads walked in they all walked in past our table to get to their table and they all went all right, all right. you know there was that animosity between them like obviously still and Eddie Gray said all right Graham <laughs> I, I had to phone dad that night when I got in and said, mm -hmm. Eddie Gray spoke to me. He knew my name and everything. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. He was my hero. God. He never had a bad left foot either, nice did he? Else. Eddie Gray. Wow, what a left foot he had as well. Dirty Leeds United, but uh, what a good side, though. What a good side. Yeah. Oh, my God. I went to the um, yeah. League Cup we're gonna, we're gonna against Leeds. Again, and was it 68? 68, I think it was, Graham. Leeds played Arsenal. First final I've ever been to at Wembley. And you, Leeds, I said you, not you. Leeds beat us 1-0. Cooper scored when they no, uh, think, they did I the goalkeeper. Charlton did the goalkeeper. Yeah, 68, yeah. And Melvin. Was it all, what's that? I say, I unfortunately, uh, Graham's got a shoot okay. off at nine, which is oh, a couple it? of oh, minutes right. time. Anyway, so I come out of that ground. Down. Yeah, well, no, I'm talking about the Leeds game. It must have been the year before. Yourself, I think we played two years running. And I come out of that ground, I was in tears because I saw the way they scored the goal leads and they wasted time like I've <laughs> never, ever seen before. They'd walked 80 yards to take a throw on, they'd go on the deck, and it yeah. like, you know, I just felt so horrible. We all, listen, we always get beat Arsenal. You know, we get beat like everyone else. But that one was a horrible, horrible one to take. The way they did it, Leeds. <coughs> but they were Lee, a very good team. Lee, yeah. do, you, do you mind? And now, uh, you know, and uh, now everybody wrapping up in a second. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, listen, Graham, we've got to wrap it up there. Again. Know. Say that again. Yeah, oh, next time. Got... Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Next time, we've got to sort the sound out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> not. Listen, I know you've got to go, but we've got you've got to shoot off. So we'll wrap it up there now. Graham, it's been wonderful listening to those memories and all that. Some great stories and all that. Night. So, on behalf of Andrew, because he can't say, he's saying thank you oh, very much. So annoying, you know. So uh, it's been a, been a pleasure talking to you, and I'm sure everybody in the chat has loved it as well. So uh, um, we'll have to rearrange it another one. Soon. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, like you know.
Graham, again, for me, fantastic. Thank you very much. Some fantastic stories and uh, good, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Graham. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, a thank you to everyone watching and uh, listening. And You're please welcome, give guys. us a like. You're welcome. Stay safe. And subscribe. And that was oh, was so frustrating. Can you imagine? Yeah. Like, I can't like, say yeah, nothing. Yeah. Honestly, oh, no. oh, listen, I don't he, know. he was fantastic. I tell you what, it's some great stories here. Oh, well, and, uh, what, 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 what a gentleman! What a gentleman! I think we can uh, arrange to get him back on. Yeah, uh, it was, go I on. mean, we literally sure, didn't yeah, touch right. the. Well, no, we didn't know. even touch the sides, really, did we? I mean, there's so many more stories we could. Well, no, no, he wanted to come back on, which is great. But like, um, what I like, all of those players back in that day, there's, there's mm. a sort of the ones that were brought up. They're all like that. They're all, all, all can talk to you. All got time to talk yeah, to you. Yeah, definitely. There's just something about that. It's brought, it's brought up in them to be like that, you know. And uh, yeah, it, it was fantastic listening to the few of these stories there, and um, you know, the disappointment of that FA Cup. Uh, final in in, uh, in seventy eight because I like um, a lot of people have asked me about that question because he, he he had played all those games and to be left mm. out unbelievable decision. But yeah, I know. He came, he came back the following year and uh, well, I thought he was brilliant in the cup final. We didn't really, you know, we didn't really say about the cross, did we? Like, it was no, like, I never mentioned. Well, that. that's it. That's Wonderful. it. I mean, yeah, unbelievable. I mean, there's so many things we could talk to him about. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was so oh, so frustrating that was. Uh, but never mind. At least uh, you Terrific guys guess. got to talk to him. Well, we got Terrific to talk to him. You stood it up, Andrew, and didn't. You know, what I mean, unbelievable, like, you know. So, but um, yeah. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful. You like just going back in time, and isn't it great that a player like him, the fond memories of of Highbury still. You know, like it was it's such a it's such a big thing, Highbury. You know, you talk to any of the old players that played there, they all say the same. You know. You know, I think in hindsight now we should never have ever gone, never left there. Uh, oh, mate, honestly, I totally agree with you. I think it was uh, David O'Leary would at once said, no, no, David O'Leary. Um, was it? Uh, or it might have been uh, Bob Wilson, actually. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But one, it was one of those sort of guys of that generation said, whenever you leave uh, any player that leaves Arsenal ever, you know, it, and you go to another club. It, it always feels like a step down in quality. Mm. And uh, those words always stuck with me. And I think, and no matter what players you, you talk to, they all say the same. You know, that it's just not the same. It's so special about it, isn't it? Yeah, it's so yeah. special about it, like, you know, so. I'll tell you what, someone exactly. just put in the chat, never really spoke about the 79 Cup final. We didn't really, did we? No, no that's no, what so I mean. No. It's, you know, no. know what I mean? It went the, so the quick, time's, it? Yeah. The time's just flown. I know, that's yeah. what I mean. I'm... Um, I'm going to have to uh, contact him and we'll see. Uh, thank him very much, uh, but get him on again because yeah. uh, there's so many more things we could talk about. And um, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to him about was uh, the, the, the terribly sad news, which we can end on today, of Maradona passing away at the age of 60. And I mean, what a what a player! I mean. Everyone knows the stories about, uh, you know, what, what went on in his private life and all the stuff he got up to. But, I mean, as a player and, you know, what a player. He's got to be one of the best players I've ever seen, obviously. And there's loads of comparisons nowadays with with, with Messi and so on and so forth. But th there was no one else like him, was there, when we were sort of, you know, younger. And, you know, no. we'd, never, no. we'd never seen that like before, have we, guys? No. Never I, seen I, that I, like I, before. I work with the three Argentinian girls who know about football, just and they say to me that uh, that Messi is not in the same league as Marad uh, Maradona. Over there, he was a god. Messi, fantastic. They love uh, Messi, but it's on a different level. Maradona, is something, and they reckon that Argentina is going to have three days of national uh, morning or something. Isn't it? Morning, yeah. something. You know, I mean, that is just that yeah. alone. I mean, the respect. And what he did in his private life, at the end of the day, people have done a lot worse in their private life. You know what I mean? yeah. But uh, And uh, the joy he gave to so many people was just unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Without, well, I don't know about you guys, but without a shadow of a doubt, and I, I, the best player I've ever seen. Yeah. Without and a me. shadow of a doubt. I don't know. No, no comparison. You can talk Messi, Ronaldo, no. great players. Not, not, not in the same league as him, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? To play on those pitches, he could, 
to be, to be kicked like he was kicked and he got up. Ah, oh, he's a sensational player. Absolutely sensational. And yeah, Arsenal will be right. signed him. You know what I mean? Did they? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, have you listened to the, um, st- uh, the uh, I think it's a stat, what's it called? Stadio podcast. Um, I listen to so many. Short, it's, only, it's only a short one. It's about 20, 25 minutes. It was out oh, two or three weeks ago. I'll send, actually, I'll put the link in the uh, show description afterwards. Right. Um, and it's uh, when Maradona played for Spurs. Yeah, I it was the old day, it's that, testimonial. Yeah, so testimonial. I went to that, went to that game. It's the, it's the behind the scenes uh, of that oh. and the story oh, behind really? it and everything. And uh, I mean, one of the little bits is like he was literally doing keepy uppies in the changing rooms. Uh, and I think he had bare feet and just a pair of shorts on, nothing else. And <laughs> whilst he, uh, he literally just turned up and uh. He was, he was signing autographs without, you know, looking, signing autographs for people whilst he was doing these keepy-uppies in the changing room as well at the same time. And people just could not believe the skill and the quality that he, that he had. And it's it it an amazing story. But, yeah, I, I, I've never seen any player like him when I was a kid. Yeah. And I just, even when he did the handball, yeah, I, I couldn't – I still couldn't hate him. <laughs> I, just I like, never hated him. No, I never hated him. No, no way. way. So many people did, you know, and uh, I, no, I couldn't I, understand I, I, I it myself. I never took that against him in any shape or form. I admired the goal no. that he got, in, in the, the, the second goal he got. And, you know, I, I wanted him to go and win that World Cup because I didn't, I didn't like the Germans, you know what I mean? And that, yeah. that was as simple as that, you know. And uh, he was just breathtaking. In that 86, he was breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking in that World Cup. He, he, just he, he played against England, I think, when he was 18 at Wembley. And I'd read a little bit about him, never seen him play. And, and the game was on TV. And in the first few minutes, he scored the, he nearly scored a goal like he did against England, that one when he dribbled. He went from in his own half, went past about three or four players. And instead of it went in, it went just past the post. I thought this yeah. is unbelievable. unbelievable. I know. Oh. And, and I'll tell you what, I don't think anyone really could argue. And it's like Jonathan Porter. Uh, thanks, Jonathan, for watching. And uh, he's put a message on there. And I couldn't agree more. It was something I was just thinking. He said, Maradona was the best. He lifted a poor Argentinian side to the World Cup and a small club like Napoli uh, to the European and league success. And I don't think that could Spot be overstated, on. can it? I don't think Spot that could be overstated. And he genuinely yeah. is the closest thing to winning the World Cup on his own, you know, he carried them on his back, didn't he? Oh, he did do, definitely, yeah. Yeah. All that they, did they, did players, they, they, they did have some good players. They did have some good players, but he just oh, took they them... Oh, they could defend uh, as well. They did they, they, he just took them to a level which, which one, yeah. of, he, he just gave them the different... And that's what he was, you know, and, you know, Napoli would never got near the title until he nah, came along. And, no way. You know, You've obviously seen the show, haven't you? The, uh, Mar- yeah, Maradona whenever film. Argentina come on the oh. telly in the World Cup and all, you just watch them because of Maradona, you know what I mean? Maradona's yeah. playing and you just you, you, you just sat there and watched him and, you know, he, he was the worst team in 1990, but he, he carried that team to the final as well and you yeah. just think, yeah. my God. You just, and he was just in awe of him. You know, a wonderful, wonderful player and mm. oh, a sad day for football, I tell you that now. It's it really is. It, it, it is. Yeah. Just 60 years old, uh, nothing yeah. is it? So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm really sad about it. It didn't hit me quite hard. I'm, I'm just like, uh, yeah, it's a shame. I'm, I'm going to watch that Maradona, you know, uh, documentary again, I think. Just yeah, to, yeah. Uh, that's quality. Yeah. 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 If you've not seen that, watch it. Absolutely. Yeah. Watch it, it's quality, like, you know. So. Oh, it just shows you what it, I mean, you can't, I know it's just, he's got, he had his, um, you know, his problems off the field and everything, but the, the life he must have lived. You, you can understand it, can't you? Yeah. I mean, he must have. I mean, he literally was the most famous person in the world at once after yeah. the '86, and it, it must have been so such stressful life to live. Well, he couldn't people, go out anywhere he, or anything like that. So, no. well, well, people loved him like they love a god. He was a god over there, yeah. wasn't he? We're just a yeah. footballer, weren't we? Yeah. Well, no. the world over, and and footballers were yeah, like the world over. Days. Yeah, football. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't forget, he was probably one, not one, one of the first, but I mean, obviously, you yeah, had players like Bobby Charlton and all that, that world famous. But I think he took it to another level in the in the eighties. And and don't forget, football was sort of looked down upon in the eighties, wasn't it? it? It wasn't the same as it as it is now. It was because we had all the violence in the UK and everything and all the tragedies and uh, and so on. But he, he sort of took superstardom within football to a new level at that point. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah he, did. he won a title in a different country. Pelé mm. won all the titles in his own country, didn't he? He'd mm. leave. He never went mm. to a European to test himself in Europe. Not saying he should have done, but he just didn't. But mm. Maradona did it in the yeah, in Europe, yeah. and he did it for his country as well. You know, phenomenal. Yeah. Kicked out of Barcelona in Spain. They just kicked him to, to smithereens. So just uh, did a series of he games. Didn't care, did he? I know, just, you know. Horrendous what they done to him, really. But yeah, horrible, uh, but he got back up and uh, got back up and done it again. And you know, even in the '82 World Cup, which uh, Graham was playing in, it, they uh, he got sent off in the end. But um, they was kicking it. Jen Seely, you remember him? Was kicking him all night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, he was hard, wasn't he? How hard? Yeah. Was that? yeah. Whew. But you know, I you're know. talking talking some you know tough to defenders then in, in those days. You know, so and they was allowed to kick you, by the way. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was yeah. The tackling from behind was all right. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It was a good, good, used to get a free hit. You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> first minute, here I am. Yeah. There you are. Like, take that, Diego. Like, yeah, I know. Right, so. it's, I mean, it's fair play to Napoli for being able to, being able to sign him. I mean, what a signing that was for them. I mean, they've never seen the likes ever since, have they? But um, I, I, he will be missed um, definitely. I think it's just such a, sh a young age to. To lose him and um yeah it's, it's a very sad day for football like you said Lee. it really is and so and anyway another, guys oh, sorry, sorry. sorry go on no, no go on, go no, on another what you say? sad guy that i've been on a couple of pods with um who passed away today didn't he lee oh heavy day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've, i mean i didn't know him well i've been on a couple of pods with him yeah i didn't know yeah. that yeah, sad. 43, very sad. Like, 43, you know, yeah. what, um, whether you loved him or he oh. didn't, you know, he was a larger than life character. I always got on really well with Colin, and uh, he was never a uh, flash, you know. It, when he came out, big brother, uh, um, he was always still the same person, you know, <laughs> crazy, but uh, yeah, and he, he had his boxing, um, when he was doing his boxing, he invited uh, funny enough, me and Claude. To go and watch it at the O2 light, like, and uh, he looked after us that day, you know. And uh, yeah, very, very sad, just like you know. And um, I don't know what's happened, no one seems to know, but like 43, tragic, like you know, oh, honestly, tragic. yeah. I mean, I've literally hardly I've, I've been at work all day, so I didn't, I didn't know about that. So that is very, very sad news, but yeah, far too young. This, this year, do you know what? This year can't finish quick enough, can it? I mean, it's just, I'm not that. Changing the, the, the calendar is going to magically change everything. Nah. But this year has been the worst in Well, it's been the worst in memory. I'll say that now, like, you know, so. Um, not, you know, not the so. only one, mate. My life is, was, this time last year, was, uh, you know, as happy as can be. And uh, it's just, a, it, I just want to get rid of it, mate. It's just yeah. an awful, awful night. But anyway, let, just I don't want to uh, end this uh, episode in a, on a really sad note. That's a bad. Oh, I won't let you then, Andrew. I'm not going to let you do that. Let's put it this way: when things turn, and they will, we'll all appreciate the better times more. Won't oh, hundred percent, and hundred percent, and uh, yeah. Don't worry about uh, you know exactly, on, exactly. And I, I'd really I put in the uh, private chat a couple of messages that you guys could have read, but one of them was yeah. I wonder I wonder whether. Graham, you said mention grow his, about, oh, I ain't saying grow his right. hair back. I wonder, I wonder whether Graham could grow his hair back. Well, into I don't think he wafer. could after seeing him today. Yeah, but no, he's, 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 got, he's got more hair than, uh, than a lot of us. He's got yeah, more right, hair. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, he might, he, 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 you know. It as it happens, it, he's that hairstyle that he had it back in the 80s. It's sort of come back, isn't it? That's what you're sort of saying. With That's what I'm on about, and, hey. Because Gwendouzi, Louise, and uh, Willianne, he's a bit right in there. They're doing the Rixie, aren't they? They're having the Rixie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, so. And he was, I mean, he was eight, probably eight stone wet through, wasn't he, uh, Graham Ricks, when he was you playing? Were, like, was... Very, fit, very thin, wasn't he, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, but he was tough, though, what, like underrated, a lot of the players. Underrated at Arsenal. I know, like... Yeah, um, yeah he was. I, I didn't want to say that to him today, but, like, um, sort of went under the radar. And I, 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 in when um, Liam Brady left, there was a lot put on him. And I tell you, a lot put on him... And Paul Davis, Paul Davis was the sort of oh, one that came yeah. in, and he got a brunt of the stick because of it, what you know. And plan. what what wonderful plan, what mental strength he had because he came through that uh, yeah. the, the the Arsenal boo, boo, boo boys to become a you know well respected well, and loved, you know. So, absolutely, I mean, it could have gone yeah. the other way for Tony Adams as well. I mean, I, when he first broke into the team, 
he was making so many mistakes, you know, when he was younger. And, you know, but they, we, they stuck with him. And that's what you need yeah. to do with the younger players. Just, like, you know, get him the experience and just ride it through. But you don't get that time no more. You don't oh, get that oh, time, do you? I remember, I don't know if you remember it, like, uh, Frank Stapleton got the bit of the old boo oh, when yeah. he first came into the side. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, they wasn't quite... Uh, it took him a little while to turn it around. So, And that's why I think you've mm. got to have a bit of mental strength to be an Arsenal man, you know what I mean? Yeah, to come through yeah. it all. And uh, yeah. I'm afraid this current team, uh, you know... Uh, like someone like Graham Ricks, let's face it now, he'd walk into this Arsenal side on his oh, own. Yeah. Like, we'll yeah, yeah. absolutely walk into it, like, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. I think uh, like, Paul Davis as well would be one of the most sought after midfielders yeah. you know, in Europe. In Europe, uh, I think he, he's, he's another one that's really underrated. He was class act. And I yeah, mean, Rowcastle. Beautiful, Ro touch. beautiful touch. Ro Castle, beautiful. I mean, he, he would be probably, I mean, he'd be. You couldn't put a price on his head. A player like Rocky. Right as well. Work out, though, Rocky. I don't know why, um, but the fans just took to him straight away. But I think maybe because of the name Rocky wrote, but I don't know why. But he, he had a lovely like, face. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think it's just a, he, he had the, the the aura about him. Where, where when he first walked into the side, you was you, you liked him, didn't you? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Fans Definitely. give him a chance. Mind you, he did, 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 did do well, got, you know, when he first came in. But he was never a boo boy. He, he, he straight away, no. the fans took no. to him. But, yeah, you know, as you say, Paul Davis, Frank Stapleton, and they had to... That, Graham Ricks, to be fair, come straight in and the fans yeah. took to him, didn't they? He scored in his first game. He scored in his first game. Willie Young did. Leicester. He never, you know what I mean? Le like, so. Leicester, I think, wasn't it? I think yeah, it was Leicester. Yeah, Leicester 3-0. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, yeah. I remember... Um, there was a podcast I listened to earlier today, and I, I, I can't think which one it was, and I do apologise for those people that uh, did it, but they said they told a Roadcastle story as, uh, as well about um, it was against Huddersfield in the Cup. In fact, actually, it, it was uh, it might have been the Arse blog, it might have been, you know, James from the Arse blog who said it, and uh, within a couple of minutes, it, you know, he was getting clattered and clattered by this left-back from Huddersfield uh, in the Cup, and... Um, he was taking all this grief. And then two minutes later, Roadcastle just took this bloke out, literally just flattened him, you know. And and he looked over him as if like, like a glad gladiator sort of thing, you know. You know, like uh, Rob Holding did, a, a rip-off of, uh, against Sadi um, Mane the, uh, last season. And he was looking over him like that as to say, you know, I, you know, do what you like, mate. But you know, this I'm David Rocast or something, and he, he just took no crap. That guy, yeah. that he was, he was proper tough player. as an ox. Proper I mean, it, proper strong player. You know, real character. But he also had the skill of a Brazilian player, didn't he? Of, of the he had generation. everything, didn't he? As a footballer, he had everything. Anything you want yeah. to be a footballer, he had it, and that was it. I was he looking did, yeah. to record that brilliant goal again uh, when he beat. He beat uh, Robson, he beat on a halfway line, chipped the keeper. Amazing. So when he united that time, oh, it's fantastic. I'd say that's, Jonathan's just put a great thing in the chat there because, you know, look, we lost Frank Stapleton and, 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 and Graham never alluded to it. And we oh, were great yeah. with Lee Chapman, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, oh, my yeah, God. And he, and he sort of said there wasn't this, there really good, this the player that signed weren't the same as Frank Stapleton. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, they bloody weren't, you know what I mean? I had Lee that Lee. written down to ask him as well, oh, Graham. Oh, I said, Lee. I was going to say Lee. about... We should have asked him those questions, John Orley. What? No wonder if... Hankin, Ray Hankin. Do you remember him? Ray, Ray oh, Hankin. Ray Hankin. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah. And who's that geezer? Cosim, Cosimodo. No, Cos, an Australian guy played centre forward. I think he we brought him on a sub and took him off 10 minutes later. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was his name? Caught with a K. He come from Australia. Kosiecki. Kosiecki. Is it Kosiecki? No. Kosiecki. I can't remember um, his name now, but well, I know, we went for about six or seven centre forwards after Stapleton. We just yeah, couldn't get oh, it right. Just well, no, I was going to ask him whether Lee Chapman was the worst set, worst centre forward Arsenal have ever had. No. You know, I, no, oh, no. mate. Honestly, I hated. I mean, I shouldn't. Say just, that. I, don't it, hate, I don't hate any goons. Just but, never Arsenal. We just come in to you know oh, uh, that geez. stage. To replace Char, uh, to replace Frank Stone, it never worked, did it? Like, he was in other clubs with him, no Lee. He done all right with right. the other clubs, didn't he? He played for Lee. Yeah, so he went to, went to, uh, I think Triple he Wednesday, scored against us. Yeah. Got the winner. He went he went to to Charles, Charles, Lee, didn't he? 
I can't think of a worse well one. Forest, he's done really well at Knott's Forest under Brian Clough, That's who it, was a yeah. fucking sort of person. You know what I mean, give him his due. It just didn't work for us. Well. Yeah, it just didn't work for us. Awful, awful for us. We had a little anyway, bit of bad time around there, didn't we? Not, but we did. Go. It was a. It was if you live live through those Terry Terry Neal years, you know, you'd never moan about anything that's going on at the moment. Ah, no, 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 no. Honestly, no. you know, it's like a different world. Oh, I never, ever thought, would, you know, when are you going through the mid-80s and that, we, we had that really poor period before George Graham turned up. And it was, it was horrible, right. you know. <laughs> but if you live through those and you come out the other side, you can live through any, any period of Arsenal, I think. What Graham said there, Arsenal were close to something back in the 80s. We were, they, yeah. They went down out. yeah. Same old bloody Arsenal, just don't... Yeah. Nothing changes. <laughs> Nothing changes. Even back then. Even back then. You know what I mean? So, like one, I mean I, one or two players away we was. One or two players away. I remember uh, Chris White playing up front for us as a striker. Right, yeah. Under under um another lovely fellow. Yeah, Chris. It, yeah, absolutely. But it, not as a striker, mate. You, know, honestly, <laughs> you don't, you don't put him up front. Left, you know? Do you know a little little story about Chris White? He 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 played actually. 99 games for Arsenal, so he, mm. he never be able, he wasn't allowed in the 100 club, so he, he can never get a freebie at the Arsenal. He has to always buy his tickets and oh, everything like that. That's a shame because he, he, yeah, because right. he got 90. If he'd have played one more game, he would have been in the 100 club, you know. What oh, I mean? yeah, like yeah. So, yeah, he should have so, um, he should have shaved his head that as well, Chris White. That's the one, one thing I always remember about him. I don't know, but anyway, uh, anyway. Love, really nice guy, really, nice yeah, guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, anyway, I'm going to have to leave it there, guys, really and I can't thank, you, very thank you enough. Uh, really maybe, very much. maybe you can both come back on when we have the next Graham Rick show as well. Yeah, come back on I'll together. I look to forward to that. That was great. Well, that was, I really thank enjoyed you very much. Thank you for on, Andrew. I really appreciate that. It was really yeah, yeah, mate. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Good to no go problem back. at all. Great. The good old days. Great. Yeah, it was. It was. Right. It, just to forget about the weekend's match. Yeah. Forget about what's happening at the moment and just talk about when Arsenal were great, you know. Or well, that's not particularly great. Right. Not great. Not great. Not great. No, that, that is when I fell in love with Arsenal. That's when, you know, as a kid growing up, that's what. That, yeah. the, why I feel for Arsenal now is because of, you know, people like Graham Rixley and Brady. And exactly, to yeah. Have, to get, have the opportunity to talk to him. I, I thank you very much for that. Yeah. Not a problem. At, not a problem at all. And uh, yeah, hopefully getting back on very soon. And uh, once again, thanks ever, ever so much for everyone watching live uh, or listening back to this on the audio. Please give us a like before you go. Really, really appreciate that. That includes you two guys. And uh, <laughs> subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Because uh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, see if we can get a few more viewers further down the line. Keep growing it. But uh, thanks again. <laughs>